those who don't know you yet, Jeff, uh, can you give us a brief background about yourself? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was raised in um, in the states. I was raised mm-hmm. in Minnesota, a very average American Catholic boy. Mm-hmm. And uh, in high school, I was involved with everything that everybody else is. Really, I was a uh, I was a running back in football. I was a goaltender in hockey. I was a track mm-hmm. runner and had girlfriends and parties and everything else. But <laughs> by the time that I was uh, getting ready to graduate from high school, I was really searching for mm-hmm. for deeper meaning in life. And and I was looking into Eastern religions and meditation and things mm-hmm. like that. And and I ended up uh, I, I ended up uh, getting involved in stand up comedy. Oh. And I um I did I did very well. And I ended up with some scholarships to go to uh, acting school. And uh, I turned that down because I wanted to get my prerequisites in college out of the way. Mm-hmm. So I stayed in Minneapolis and I went to mm-hmm. uh, junior college. And that's where I met Emily, my wife. And she's the one that introduced me to this personal relationship with with Jesus and I had never heard of that before, you know, raised it, Catholic. It, I just, I didn't ever heard of it. So I, um, uh, she started talking to me about the Lord and it really mm. caught my attention. And one thing led to the, to the next. And before you know it, I was praying and mm. asking God to come into my life. And I felt that my life was really changed at that point. And, and it wasn't too long after that, you know, that I ended up going to Bible college and mm. in Dallas, Texas. And uh, after that, I went to uh, broadcasting school for mm-hmm. television and radio and uh, got my first job in, in North Dakota in radio. And that's where I left the Catholic Church. Ooh. And uh, and then I went into uh, radio in Iowa, another state, mm-hmm. and then went back to school and for to become a pastor. And I was ordained a Protestant pastor. So. Uh, uh, I, I would like to step back a bit. Uh, Emily, during that time, was not Catholic. Right. No, no, no. Oh. She was she was more of a kind of an independent, charismatic, mm. you know, in the United States, very popular. And mm. um, she and I had, no, I, you know, I, I didn't have any any allegiance to the Catholic Church, really. I didn't know anything, mm. you know, but I was uh, going to these independent charismatic churches and mm. getting all excited about the Lord and fellowshipping with people who were excited and. So mm-hmm. I, I just sort of sort of drifted away from the church and started to go where people were excited. And uh, it wasn't it, I didn't leave the Catholic Church because of theology. Mm-hmm. I was I was loved out of the church, basically, you know, by, by mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. and so for for most of our marriage, then we were not Catholic. At that point. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, you have the you have your book, My Life on the Rock. And mm-hmm. I, I read some excerpts on the book prior to this conversation one thing that shocked me is that time when you 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 said you headed with the church you shouted in front of a lot of people and the bishop Bishop. can you can you tell us that story yeah i had um uh i my you know my parents did not accept this new relationship with the lord and it caused uh tension between me and my parents and my sisters and uh, they didn't really want me talking about Jesus or the Bible mm. anymore around them. And so that was frustrating to me. And, and I was in Valley City, North Dakota, mm. and uh, I went to what was called an open service. And that's where the bishop comes to town. It's not a mass. He just mm. is going to talk to the people about how they're doing. And, and I was frustrated. I was angry. You know, I, I, uh, mm. I was disillusioned with the Catholic Church. I didn't think that anybody was... was uh, born again, you know, or <laughs> I didn't think that anybody was serious about the Lord. They, after all, they, they didn't read the Bible. They didn't witness to other people. I didn't know them to praise God. So mm. I went to that, that open service and I raised my hand, you know, he was taking questions <laughs> and I, I kind of went, came unglued. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, I said, uh, that I, I am, um, have given my life to Christ, but there doesn't seem to be any place for me in the Catholic church. And Mm. I started to make up a bunch of stuff, you know, (laughs) I'm not educated enough and, and uh, I'm married. I can't be a priest. And Uh finally I just sort of came on unglued. And I said, I have had it (laughs) 
at the Catholic Church and I yelled at the top of my voice and oh. I stomped my feet. I clapped my hands and I yelled out from this day forward and I screamed out, I am not Catholic. And I got up and started walking out of the church. And mm -hmm. as I was walking out, I heard someone clapping and I turned around and it was the bishop clapping. And he said, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you later. And I said, I don't know. And I, I left and I went home that night. I didn't sleep very well because I thought as a good Catholic, I thought I'm going to hell now. <laughs> I just yelled at a bishop, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the next morning I went out to the, uh, to the uh, monastery and I went out there to, say goodbye to them basically and little did i know they told the bishop don't go back to your place stay out here tonight he'll be here in the morning you can talk to him okay. so i so i went out there and he did he stayed there and i i knocked on the door and guess who answered but the bishop and i was scared you know he said come on uh -huh. in and uh, uh -huh. he said i want to hear your story so i told him my story and he looked at me and he said let me tell you three things he said mm -hmm. number one the journey you're on is of god Okay. And I said, what? And he said, it's of God. I said, God is, God's doing something in your life. He said, number two, I'm going to call you little Newman, which I had no idea what he was talking about <laughs> at all. And, uh, and uh, he said, you remind me of Newman and your love for scripture. And then mm -hmm. he said, number three, he said, mark my words. Someday you're going to return and you're going to teach your people. And this I Cardinal said, I Newman. Think so. the yeah, that's Cardinal Newman, the, the guy that uh, is a okay. saint now. So, <laughs> okay. not Alfred so, Newman, the, the guy. No, I thought it, I thought that's what he might have been talking about. <laughs> Mad Mag, you know, Mad Magazine that he thought I was clowning around or a jokester. You know? and I'd never heard of any Cardinal Newman, that's for sure. Okay. And he told me he thought he I would come back to the Catholic Church someday, and I said I don't think so. And I got up, shook his hand, and I left. That's all. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's funny that sometimes even if you question the church it's really just part of the journey yeah right because i can yeah. i've been an atheist before as well myself and for the longest time I, I was regretting the part of my life when i was an atheist but when i think about it i realized that some of the things i learned about god the defense on his existence, I wouldn't learn if I hadn't been an atheist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I would have gone on to do the things that I've done uh, yeah. had I remained Catholic. You yeah, know, I don't, yeah. I don't think that would have been possible to, to do. So I'm, I'm okay with the journey, you know, I'm okay with God <laughs> as long as you go leading back. and guiding me. <laughs> My mom <laughs> and dad weren't exactly okay, but I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you tell us this story and how you went back to the church? So well, you were I, you know, Protestant I was a pastor. pastor. Yeah, mm. I was for 12 years and uh, probably around the ninth year. Mm. Uh, I had an advantage over a lot of other people. And that is I, I took study very seriously. Mm. And so I was I learned Hebrew. I studied the Bible. I, I looked deep into the roots of Christianity. And that was unusual for a charismatic mm. church. Uh, church. For a pastor to take it that seriously so the more i studied the early church the more i started to realize that my church didn't look anything like that at all nothing nothing in common and that brought about a little bit of a crisis of faith for me because i wanted to be back in that church that he established and mm -hmm. and uh, and so the more i studied i started to see common denominators you know in that early church like uh the blessed mother the Eucharist, the papacy, mm -hmm. the concept of the word of God being scripture and tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, my church didn't look anything like that. And so I started to look for that church. And mm -hmm. uh, the more I studied, the more it looked like it was actually the church I left, the Catholic <laughs> church. And I didn't want that. I did not want to be Catholic at mm -hmm. all. And so I started looking into uh, what was called the Episcopal Charismatic Denomination. Oh. And I was looking into becoming a priest in that denomination. And mm. so I went to visit with them and uh, applied. And they said, yes, but I would have to be a deacon for six months and then mm. six months to a year. And then I would be ordained a, a priest in that denomination. Mm. Well, I right before I left that, that engagement, uh, there was a book on the table for sale called Evangelical is Not Enough by Thomas Howard. 
And I, mm -hmm. I looked at the table of contents. I thought, whoa, this is what I've been going through. This is fantastic. And mm -hmm. so I, I bought it and started reading it, thinking I was going to be affirmed in the Episcopal Church. And I got to the end of it, and this writer announced that he had left the Episcopal Church and became Roman Catholic. Oh. And I said, what? <laughs> and that really bothered me. So I, I got his phone uh -huh. number, and I, call, I called him. <laughs> oh. And I said, I said, Mr. Howard, what's going on here? And he told me, and I said, the same thing's happening to me. And he said, uh -huh. well, I got a guy I want you to meet. His name is Marcus Grodi. He just made this change too. And uh, uh, EWTN, Scott Hahn. Yeah, Marcus Grodi. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and Scott Hahn. And, uh, oh, yeah. and so I wrote their names down. I didn't think anything much of it. But, uh, and so I continued to study the early church fathers and the more I studied, the more convinced I was that I, I, God was calling me back to the church because mm -hmm. now I had an understanding of it, you know, a scriptural understanding and a historical understanding. And uh, when I left home at 18 years old to go to Bible college, the night before I left, my dad and I got into a big fight mm -hmm. and uh, over religion. And uh, that night he kind of knocked me down <laughs> and we never, we never talked about it after that. You know, I mean, it was always a, kind of a sore spot, but we never talked about it. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really want to come back into the Catholic church. And that was part of the reason I didn't want to give my dad the satisfaction of, you know, <laughs> him saying, well, this, this was the church. <laughs> so I, I continued to study and, uh, and I came to the conclusion that God was calling me back. And I called Marcus Grodi, oh. and and I told him about what was happening to me. And he said, well, you need to visit with your childhood pastor. And I said, well, he's a bishop now, Bishop Paul Dudley. Mm -hmm. And he said, Bishop Dudley, he said, he's, he's mm -hmm. phenomenal. You've got to call him. <laughs> so I called him in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I called him and he answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And I told him who I was and he remembered, you know, I left when I was mm -hmm. 13. I never I hadn't seen him for years. Mm -hmm. He remembered me and I asked uh, us some questions and he said, would you come on out here and spend a couple of days with me? And I said, sure. So I did. And it just, it just confirmed more and more that I was to come back. And uh, I told my wife and then I told the elders of my church that I was going to be resigning and going back to the Catholic church. And Bishop Dudley wanted me to get a, a graduate degree from Steubenville this time uh, instead of yeah. a Protestant degree. Okay. Okay. So I uh, I said that's what I'm going to do, and and then uh, I I made that decision, and I I ended up going home in Minnesota to t I was in Dayton, Ohio at the time, and mm. um, I went home to tell my dad, and as <laughs> I told him, there was a tremendous healing between us, and. Uh, wow. And after that, then I uh, went to Steubenville and a year later, Emily came into the church. And uh -huh. while I was in Steubenville, I was asked by the administration if I would teach introduction to scripture to freshmen. And I mm -hmm. said, yes. And, and I picked up this old study that I developed when I was 25 called the great adventure. And, uh, mm. I, so, I baptized so you started, it as Catholic. <laughs> so you started the great it. adventure the, even before you're not Catholic yet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I started uh -huh. a great adventure when I was uh, about 25, 26 years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was a young pastor and um, in my first couple of years as a pastor mm -hmm. and I knew the stories of the Bible, but the one thing I didn't know was the story, the overarching uh -huh. story, yeah, the big picture. Yeah. Yeah. And so I developed that chart um, within 48 hours. I built that whole chart in 48 wow. hours and, and I had no idea that that chart would define the rest of my life. I had uh -huh. no idea at all. And so I, first 10 years, I just carried a small one around with me, a copy mm -hmm. just to study with. And when I made up my mind, I was going to come back to the Catholic church. I met with Scott Hahn at his house in Steubenville. Uh -huh. I showed him my chart, my timeline mm -hmm. chart. He just went, whoa, he loved it. He's like, whoa, that's amazing. So that's what Weird. I used to teach at Steubenville. And yeah. then. And then uh, I taught there. And then about a year and a half later, I got a call from Mother Angelica at EWTN. Uh -huh. And she asked if I would come on her show and tell my story. I said, sure. So I went on there and, and in the middle of the show, she said, would you pray about doing a 13 week show for us here? And I said, sure. So mm -hmm. I pretended like I prayed, you know, I said, yes. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, 
and mm-hmm. nobody knew me at the time, but everybody yeah. knew Scott. So I asked Scott mm-hmm. if you'd do it with me. And so we did Our Father's Plan, which is the longest running show on EWTN in history. And mm-hmm. uh, we did that. And then after I got done doing that live show with Mother Angelica, we were walking off the set and she brought me to the side and she said, would you pray about moving here and hosting your own show? Mm. And I, she mm. said, uh, I really have a heart to reach young adults. And the Lord told me tonight, you're the one. Mm. And mm. I said, whoa. So I, I said, I got to pray about that. And I prayed with Bishop Dudley about that for a month or so. And I called up and said, yes, I, I would like to, to do that. And so we ended up leaving Steubenville, went to Birmingham, Alabama. And that's where I developed the show called Life on the Rock. Oh, and okay. uh, six okay. months after I was there, I have Mother Angelica asked me to be her substitute and to be with mm-hmm. her on her shows when she wasn't feeling good. So, and I was oh. there for six years. Mm-hmm. One of the common denominators I noticed to converts to Catholicism is the study of church fathers. Mm-hmm. So is it, that's, I guess, your like spark. Could, could this be the reason why Solus Scripture is too stressed to let's say other Christian denominations, because there might be a danger once you, you get to the church fathers, there's yeah. a danger you'll be Catholic. Yeah, you got a big problem on your hands, and that yeah. is that the what they believed, how they worshipped, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, their the authority question, all those things are different than than somebody renting out a movie theater and having church. You mm-hmm. know? Uh, it's very different, and. And uh, you either have to say, I don't want to be a part of that early church, or you have to say, I got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a part of that church, mm-hmm. but what do I do to do that? And what you do is you have to join that church, and that's the Catholic mm-hmm. Church. And, you know, I'm, I'm like everybody else. You know, I don't see the Catholic Church as being 100% perfect in, as mm-hmm. far as people. Mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. see it perfect in terms of the teaching. And it's the it's it's the gift of God. It's the family of God. It's yes. the teachings that Jesus gave us. It's all perfect, but we've got so much humanity in the way that that uh, you you can get you can get uh, sidetracked, you know, with mm. all the problems that go on. And and I ended up coming back to the Catholic Church based on my studies, mm. and uh, mm. and then I was hit with the church. You know, when okay. I came back in, all of a sudden I ran into people that not everybody believes this. You know. Mm-hmm. this stuff and so that was another bit of a little a little bit of a uh, of a crisis mm. 